on KDWB. Your bank calls to take a survey and you're cheating? Hang up. It's War of the Roses on KDWB. This War of the Roses involves a little bit of a mystery. Let's find out whether the mystery gets solved. The mystery on the War of the Roses is always, are they cheating or not? Mm -hmm. But this one is like a mystery wrapped in a puzzle, wrapped in uh, an enigma, Jenny. And then uh, I'm exaggerating a little bit just for dramatic purposes. Are they cheating or are they not cheating? We're going to find out. (laughs) Um, Aaliyah and Bradley are married. Aaliyah is on the phone. Hello, Aaliyah. Talk to us about why you want to be on War of the Roses and the big mystery at your house. Yeah, um, so about two weeks ago, we got a case of wine delivered to our house. And we drink wine, but, like, definitely not something I would order. So we asked each other who ordered it. uh, And both of us were like, you know, did you order it? No. Did you order it? No. Uh, Didn't come with a note or anything like that. Uh, so we're just a little confused. That's we- it kind of weirds me out, but but that happens yeah. sometimes because we'll get a package. We even got an iPhone delivered to our house one time. We did not order an iPhone. Yeah, I got some oh. sort of a bad fan delivered to my house, and and I don't. There's different reasons why people say they do it. Some people say they'll order something expensive because they want to steal it off your porch. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but oh. you got the wine, which is okay, kind of odd. Yeah, but- I mean. You know, it could have been that or it could have been, like, maybe someone sent us a gift and just, like, didn't put the note in it or whatever. The short version is we never really figured out who it was from. Um, But then this past Monday, we got another case of wine. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And so I'm looking at it, like, the heck. And and someone had to sign for it. And I happened to be home. Um. And so, like, not long after that, Bradley gets home. And I'm like, all right, let's... At this point, we're, like, kind of making a joke out of it, you know? Like, who's our mystery, like, <laughs> our mystery co-admirer or something? We don't know. Yeah. Um, so we open it, and it, this one did have a note. Oh, this one did have a note. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we decided to read it, like, together. Um, and it's, like, burned into my memory now because... It's such a weird thing that, like, how can I forget? Um, And the note just said, (laughs) Bradley, since you're whining and dining my wife anyway, I thought I'd send you some more wine, you piece of s***. Whoa. (laughs) Wow. Okay, so it says, Bradley, you're, you're basically whining and dining my wife. Here is more wine. Right. Peace. Yeah. Who's it from? Did they sign their name or no? Yeah. and this Oh, they did? Where, yes. And this is kind of why I'm calling you guys. So backstory up until now. So the person that signed their name is Jonah. And I've never met him, but Bradley knows exactly who he is because it's one of his coworkers' husbands. And her name is Jess. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like... Okay, let's not get crazy. Let's give him a second to be like, <laughs> what's going on? Um, and so basically Bradley goes, yes, hey, like we've gone to dinner before because we're coworkers and that's it. And that he actually has usually gone with other coworkers. Like it's out in the open, you know, it, this is not a secret, right? Like he's not trying to hide it yeah. um, from the coworkers at least. Okay. Uh, and he's like, I'm not banging her or whining and dining her. <laughs> you know, it's Texas Roadhouse. <laughs> oh, so they're going to this. Okay. So so I was going to say that that kind of comes into play. Like, you do go out to co-work with coworkers. Um, uh, and there are going to be people who go, because there are guys and there are probably women like this, too, that get insanely jealous where it's right. like, wait, you went to have drinks with Bradley? Are you banging Bradley? I need to get this. Like, no, I'm not banging Bradley. We just went out. We we go with and and the fact that they went to Texas Roadhouse it can be kind of somewhat telling. But you know, I mean, you're also not going to go to Kincaid's necessarily <laughs> for a work dinner with somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, but oh. it does really yeah. sound like the husband of his coworker is jealous more so than anything because it kind of sounds like I don't know. I, I might say yeah, kind of sounds controlling at this yeah. point. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, he just sounds like a nut, honestly. Um, But 
and I kind of got a little suspicious only because he didn't admit that they had gone out one-on-one at first. Like, he didn't tell me at first that there have been some times that were one-on-one. Okay. So, okay. I know who she is. I know she's a coworker, um, and I don't know if there's something else going on. But clearly, her husband thinks something else is going on. You know, like, so you know, I'm, I'm. You could go either way. You could be like her husband's right. totally justified, but her husband sounds like a psycho. To be honest with you, right? Because he's also playing a game with you and your relationship and your husband instead yeah. of just maybe confronting your yep. husband like an adult would do. He's sending cases of wine. Well, you got to know that also this guy Jonah has asked his wife Jess. Are you doing anything? Is anything going on with you and Bradley? And she's probably said, absolutely not. Unless that one in a million case where they go, yeah, but you know, you got to, I don't know. You got to get over it something. I don't know. Um, uh, Okay. Is, I worked with somebody one time and this was just, it was, it was an awful, ugly situation. Um, It was, I worked with a woman and, uh, and her boyfriend did not like me. Because she had admitted that at one time when she first started, she had a crush on me. (laughs) And uh, she did not have a crush on me anymore, but her boyfriend was controlling, Mm. and he was jealous, and he did not like the fact that we shared a studio together for several hours a day. And um, there was, of course, nothing. I mean, people, men and women, or like gay couple, whatever work in the same room, work together all the time. It doesn't mean they're doing anything. Right. All right. So he's either a psycho or your husband's lying to you. Uh, Yeah, basically. (laughs) And that's why we're on War of the Roses. Okay, so it all makes sense. We'll come back in a second. We will uh, make the phone call to Bradley, see who he wants to send roses to, and then hopefully he'll say you and not Jess. Then we'll talk to Jonathan Vogel from Vogel Family Law to find out what he says about the whole thing. Ryan's War of the Roses on KDWB. So War of the Roses this week, it starts off when uh, Bradley and Jess, they're married, they get a box of wine, a, a case of wine delivered to their house with no card. They're like, who is this from? Yeah, and that happens sometimes. People get things delivered that they don't know where it's from and there might be some scams involved in it, but it's like, what do you do? You just like take it in and you keep it for yourself. A couple of days later, like just a couple of days ago, Monday, they get another case of wine. They open it together, and it said something like, hey, since you're trying to wine and dine my wife anyway, here's some more wine for you, you piece of blank. Mm-hmm. And that's to Bradley, the guy part of the couple. And and, and uh, Ali is like, what the hell? What is this? Oh, God, her husband's crazy because we went out to dinner a couple of times at Texas Roadhouse. We went to dinner with her. Yeah, you know, we went to dinner. A big deal. It was like a work dinner, whatever. So she thought it was suspicious that her husband gets this box of wine, and he's never told her that he's gone out to dinner with Jess. Right. Okay. So we're going to call Bradley right now. We're going to see who he wants to send flowers to on War of the Roses. We're all done already. So like I said, as a reward, I do have a dozen long stem romantic red roses to give to whoever you'd like. So all I need from you is going to be the name of the person you'd like to send the roses to. Um, you can send it to, uh, if you're ready, Jess. Okay, got that down. Perfect. Can, can you send them to her work, actually? Yeah, that works. No problem. Can you just tell me where she works? Okay, perfect. Yeah, no issue there. So then also, I'll get those sent to her work. The other thing I was wondering is we can attach a card if you'd like. So if you want to put a card with it, you just got to let me know what you'd like it to say. Okay, uh, um, put the bishop says hi. The what? Yeah, the, the bishop says hi. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You, you, she'll she'll get it. <laughs> okay, got it. All right, let me. Let, I'm so I'm so many questions right now. Um, is the bishop referring to your junk, uh, Bradley? Or well, let me back up a little bit here. Okay, first of all, everything you heard is just a trap. 
there's no flowers, there's no phone company, the survey was all fake, and, and we were calling to see who you would send flowers to. And when I say we, I mean mostly your wife, uh, Aaliyah, who put us up to this to see who you would send flowers to. I know this is a lot to absorb. Are you still with me? Okay, that, I think he hung up. Yeah, I think so too. I think he panicked, and I think he hung up. Should we try calling him back? Yeah, let's do it. He doesn't get out of it that easy. Please leave your message for... Okay. Uh... Well, Aaliyah, I think there is a couple of things at work. Number one, he sent the roses to Jess... Number two, you got to figure the bishop says hi is some sort of sexual reference. Mm -hmm. I've never really heard anybody say that, but I kind of have. Are you still there, Aaliyah? No, I'm here. I'm just absorbing everything. Yeah, I know. I'm honestly like... Well, that's the hard part about War of the Roses is like, you know, you come in thinking that, you know, it's kind of a weird story and you're pretty sure that you're fine. But then... And the third part, that he hung up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, I mean, I appreciate you guys having me on, obviously, and, like, helping me, I guess, catch him at this point. It's not even, like, clear it up. <laughs> it's pretty well, clear. I mean, I'm not sure how much we helped, but at least you have some more information. Mm-hmm. War of the Roses on KDWB. This text says, out of the gate with... Is the bishop your junk? Well, that was the first thing that I thought. That's the first thing that I thought about. <laughs> yeah. This text says, how did the other husband have their address? If their husband didn't involve HR immediately because some creep got their address, then he is guilty. Another one? Oh, my God. He calls it the bishop? Wow. <laughs> okay. We don't have the bishop on the phone. We got the counselor on the phone, the family attorney. Jonathan Vogel. Yeah, thanks, for not call- thanks for not calling me the bishop. I appreciate that. You know, it might grow on us a little bit later on, but we'll see. <laughs> Jonathan Fogel, family attorney, always kind of a highlight on War of the Roses. Give us some advice on what you what you take away from this one. Jonathan's been doing this for a long time, and every time we put Jonathan on, he's like, that reminds me of a story. What What does this remind you of, Jonathan? Well, this one reminded me when you talked about the wine, right? So there was this divorce in Maryland. This was some years ago. It wasn't my case, but another case. And uh, during the divorce proceeding, the parties had separated. Well, the wife broke into the husband's office. He owned this construction company. She broke into his office where he was hiding his $200,000 wine collection. Okay. And she pulled up a truck. She loaded 3,500 bottles of wine into a rental truck and then sold them. Wow. Yeah, and she, left, she did leave one. She left one bottle of 1990 Dom Perignon okay. in his office. And during the trial, he actually said, when he was asked about it, he said, you know what? I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to drink it the day the divorce is finalized. Wow. So question, I mean, if they were they divorced at the time? Because isn't that her property to sell just as much as it is his? Or was that not the case? Well, so they were still married, but a lot of the bottles, he had had this collection oh. for years, even before they got married. So a lot of the bottles were premarital, right? So she did not have the right to sell oh, those. Okay. And even if she had the right to sell some of them, she tried to keep the money and say that she didn't do it. But there was footage of her coming into his office. <laughs> and so the court ordered that they split the money. But the problem was is that the collection is gone. He had spent yeah. years collecting these bottles and you know of wine, which you know can increase in value over time the older the wine gets, and the bottles were all gone. They could never get them back, but the money was there, and uh, so the, the judge made them split the money. So it's interesting. So what you have before you go into a marriage, like let's say I've got like a classic car. Let's say I've got like a 92 Porsche. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's valuable or not. I got a 92 Porsche. I marry somebody. That is mine. She doesn't get half of it when we get divorced. That's right. That's okay. right. Gotcha. Yep. So, so let's talk about a tip that we can walk away from this with uh, that, that might be valuable to anybody who's going through a divorce. 
Well, my tip deals with personal property, right? So people think of appraisals for like houses, right? We all get our house appraised if you're you're selling it or you're refinancing or something like that. But there are appraisers that we use in divorce for almost everything, like my collections or stamp collections, paintings, baseball cards, jewelry, whatever, right? But I have seen cases where people hire personal property appraisers to come in and literally appraise everything from furniture all the way down to silverware, plates, cups, wow. everything. Don't and you I'll think there needs to be a lot of animosity in a marriage where you're going down to the plates and the silverware and the Pokemon card collection? There's just a lot of animosity, wouldn't you think? Yes. I, I always say it's not about the plates. It's about some sort of anger that they have towards each other mm-hmm. or something else because it's never about the plate. It's never about that. But the reality is when people come to me and say, well, we want to get this appraised, I say, you know what? It's going to be cheaper to go rebuy it at Target than it is to hire someone to come in and appraise it all. It's just not worth it. Some things are worth appraising like a stamp collection maybe or some jewelry. But when it comes to personal property, I tell people just let that stuff go. It's easier just to go buy new stuff. Got it. That, you know, because that I don't think Susan and I have anything that's really valuable. She wouldn't want my magic trick or ukulele collection, <laughs> I don't think. Um, Unless she was going to be spiteful. Then she'd be like, give and, me all oh, of them. Oh, and that's when it gets spiteful. Because let me tell you, when Julie and I were going through our whole thing 15, 20 years ago, there was a lot of spite. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing that I could do about it. It was just like, okay, send me this. And I'm like... I don't want to send you that. And she would be like, well, if you don't want to send it, then go ahead, call your lawyer. So I'd call my lawyer and he'd say, I can bill you for 150 or whatever dollars it is an hour. You'll end up paying it anyway. Dave, just pay it. So I would just pay it. So I, and that's kind of sometimes how it works, right? Just pay it. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to take the higher road. It it gets exhausting sometimes if you're the only one taking the higher road. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you don't, Sometimes you not you pay twice. You pay your lawyer and you pay the other person. You know, that's really interesting. Not to prolong this, but because uh, I know you got stuff to do. But uh, speaking of taking the higher road, I know a divorced couple now. And they are both somewhat guilty of little digs here and there. And I'm like, man, just stop. No wonder they get mad at you. And no wonder you get mad at them because you take mm. digs at each other every chance you get. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, you know, that, that just doesn't help. And it, it may make you feel better in the moment. But in the long run, it's going to make you feel worse. Gotcha. Jonathan Fogel, doing family law for a long time. He can help you out whether you are initiating the divorce proceedings, whether you are responding to them, whether you're in the middle of one, you're going, you know what? And you do mediation, too. Tell me more about mediation, because that is something that a lot of people don't even consider until they talk to you and go, oh, yeah. So what is mediation? Yeah, so mediation, I, I do a lot of this where people will call me and they don't even have attorneys. They don't even need to have an attorney. They'll call me and say, hey, my husband or my wife and I are thinking about getting a divorce. We need a third party to help us facilitate an agreement. And we want you to sit down with us and work that out for us without going to court, without hiring attorneys, without having to hire experts. And, you know, I use my experience to help people figure out those issues on their own. And then they can take that to court and get divorced without ever even having to hire attorneys. That's amazing. And probably a faster process, too. Much faster and much less expensive. And also, you keep control in your own hands. With going to court, you're giving a complete stranger control over your life. With mediation, you keep that control on your own. Call Jonathan to find out more. Find his number on the website, FogelFamilyLaw.com. Meet him on the phone. Meet him at Caribou. Meet him in his office, FogelFamilyLaw.com, F-O-G-E-L. And we'll wrap it up with a phone number, Jonathan. How can we reach to you? Uh, reach out to you? Yeah, you got it. 612 Eight two two six two four four is the number.